Hey, yeah. Hey, folks. It's a little unclear. I know that Richard said he won't be able to come, but I thought that Matt will show up. Yeah, he might be. Uh, I know he has some stuff going on as well, and Bartha mentioned he's going to be about 15 minutes late. Right, right, right. Hello. Hello. I guess as people kind of join in, uh, make sure you add your names to the Google Doc with the agenda. And I'm sure we can give it a few minutes for people to join in, but then maybe if there are, are new faces, if people want to introduce themselves, it might be a good place to start while we wait to see if that um, will join. So is there anyone on the call who is here the first time who wants to introduce themselves? Yes, me, Pierre. Hello, Please everyone. go ahead. So my name is Pierre. I work for ADO, which is a DIY company uh, headquartered in France, uh, number three in the DIY market in uh, Europe, uh, in the world, and number one in Europe. Um, and um, I have a group of folks working uh, in this company in charge of uh, observability. Is there anything in particular that you're interested in? Um, telemetry or, uh, you know, how to consume signals or any, any use case or anything? Uh, we are quite a large company, so all the topics are interested in, in, interesting for us. And um, I'm uh, tagging along to see you, what you guys are doing and uh, see um, how we might uh, contribute to those efforts. Cool. Awesome. Anyone else? Okay. Well. Let's have a look if there is anything on the agenda. Yeah, I would say if, if folks have something to add, please put it on the agenda below the, the names. Uh, Matt did reach out to me about an hour before the meeting uh, and asked uh, to cover the open telemetry uh, adding to Kubernetes, the API server. Uh, so I'm happy to spend a few minutes on that. But I mean, do people have other topics that they'd like to cover today? Uh, with, I also I didn't add it to agenda yet, but uh, white paper is something that I wanted to discuss today. But I really, really depend on on Bartek, and he's gonna be late yeah. for like fifteen minutes. Yeah. yeah. Then let's maybe start off with Steve and and I mean put it on the agenda that we don't forget it. <laughs> maybe something else comes up. Um, but yeah, you're right. Bartek should be here for that. Does anyone right, have anything awesome. else? Otherwise, I think Steve makes sense if you go. Give it a go. I'm happy to kick us off. Why not? Uh, so first, apologies. I'm in a coffee shop, so it might be a little bit noisy here, uh, but hopefully you can hear me all right. Uh, so basically, Matt reached out and uh, was interested in some information. If people might have heard that in Kubernetes, there was a recent uh, pull request that was merged that added open telemetry support to the Kubernetes API server. Uh, and so I thought it might be a good topic if you might be interested in to kind of learn more. And so I figured I'd cover it at a, uh, a pretty high level. 
Uh, so basically, uh, Kubernetes has a bunch of different things that generate or could generate tracing information. One of them being the API server, etcd being another one uh, as an example. Uh, and there was some amount of tracing support in there, uh, vaguely. Uh, I can show that in just a second. Uh, but very recently, uh, OpenTelemetry was natively added to the API server with a Go instrumentation. So basically, they wrapped the HTTP calls inbound and outbound, including context propagation, uh, and leveraged the OTLP exporter, which is used in OpenTelemetry project, uh, as well as the ability to kind of integrate to an endpoint, typically being an OpenTelemetry collector, as that's what typically consumes uh, OTLP traffic today. Uh, so I'll share my screen real quick and I can show folks in case you haven't seen it. So here's the Kubernetes pull request 94942. If you're interested, I can put links in the in the chat afterwards. Um, I They do a very good job of listing out the actual enhancement requests. You can read about that, what the implementation details are, which has basically full documentation on this change. Uh, I'll probably pull up the enhancement request because it's kind of uh, interesting. So they have basically all the details of why, how, considerations, next steps, what have you kind of listed in here. But it also links to the kind of prior art in open symmetry. So Kubernetes had this util called trace, uh, which is kind of a form of tracing, uh, but to be fair, it was kind of limited in what it could do. It basically only reported the latency of operations in the Kubernetes API server. Uh, and it had the ability to log some information if like limits were exceeded. Uh, and they give you kind of usage information about that. Well, this is nice if you can add native distributed tracing into Kubernetes and you can pass that context. So calls coming into the Kubernetes API server as well as calls coming out of the API server, you can actually show, uh, you can do some pretty powerful things, including potentially troubleshooting problems, uh, leveraging Kubernetes, like is it a Kubernetes problem or a code problem on the other end? Uh, this really wasn't as trivial before uh, so the idea was, hey, if we can add distributed tracing, open symmetry is a cloud native uh, implementation that is kind of picking up steam right now. Maybe we can offer a generic way that this could be send data to basically the back end of, of your choice. Uh, so they went ahead and implemented an initial version of this uh, just around the, the API server. Uh, the etcd and, and other aspects of API are not covered yet. Though uh, there are, I believe, other, did I actually keep it open? There were other uh, tickets listing. I might have closed it, so apologies if I did. Yeah, here we go. Add distributed tracing to the etcd client is an open issue, uh, and the PR is, is already open for this. So I think they're going to look to expand beyond. But the initial implementation of the API server has been merged and is a feature candidate for the 1.22 release. Uh, so if you actually take a look at the, uh, sorry, did I keep it open? I have too many tabs open. Should have done this beforehand. Apologies. Here we go. Uh, feature gates for 1.22, you'll see that the API server tracing uh, is a candidate that would be an alpha for that release. Uh, so this would really give people the opportunity to start taking advantage of turning it on. Uh, so you kind of have to opt in yourself. You do that by basically passing a configuration parameter. I think I have an example of that. Maybe I don't. Uh, here we go. You basically pass this open symmetry config file parameter, and you can see what the uh, config go struct looks for that. Uh, so basically, you're passing in the endpoint that you want to send it to, maybe port information, maybe service information. Uh, and uh, if you pass this configuration parameter, it will basically enable this alpha feature which uh, gives you the ability to make and receive calls and emit spans from the API server itself. Uh, so it's a great starting place in getting better observability natively into your Kubernetes uh, cluster. This, of course, enhances or enriches the other telemetry data, including metrics and logs that are already there today. Uh, and as mentioned, this is kind of just the starting place. There are other hooks that could be added. Uh, and there are a bunch of things that are out of scope for this initial implementation. So I definitely take, uh, would recommend you take a look at this entire enhancement proposal because they kind of list other areas that this could go as well. Uh, some of this does require manual instrumentation as you want to go really deep into Kubernetes, uh, but even having API server access is a huge step forward into uh, being able to solve some, some more complicated uh, availability and performance problems with the interactions that happen in Kubernetes. Uh, I guess with that, I'll pause questions, comments from folks. Yeah, this is super exciting. I'm I'm super happy when I saw uh, that tweet first, and I'm 
you know, this this definitely opens up in a whole lot of possibilities. The the number one thing, because I didn't really have time yet for, for a deep dive, I was wondering the obvious question, does it extend to custom resources? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. I haven't drilled into the specifics, and actually I haven't had the opportunity to run with this yet. Uh, I believe Boggan has tended, tested end to end, um, so I can ping him maybe on the CNCF Slack and see if he can comment. Uh, but that is a good question. I, I would actually, so thank you, and I would actually suggest a step further. Um, maybe we can get a CNCF webinar where maybe yourself or Otel and uh, remember, I don't remember the name from, from the, the, I think it was a Googler who, who um, sent in the PR, um, doing a joint webinar on that uh, topic and, and demonstrate it in action. I found these yeah, webinars yeah. always very useful. I agree, seeing an end to end would be really cool. That's a nice suggestion. Yeah, I can definitely ping some folks and see if we can't get that scheduled. Thank you, Matthias, David, yes. Yes, that was it. Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, I a, uh, please go on. I was going to another question. No, no, go for it. Okay. Uh, yes, really, really exciting to see that on API server. Uh, I was wondering if there is uh, enhancement proposals to add uh, tracing to other components of uh, Kubernetes, such as Kubelet or Controller Manager, et cetera. Yeah, I, I think the enhancement request covers some of this. Sorry, I don't have my tabs straight, which definitely doesn't help here. Here we go. Does this list uh, next steps? Somewhere they call this out. Maybe non-goals is one thing. Uh, so here, for example, are some things that are not in scope currently that could, of course, be enhanced uh, to support this as well. Uh, so I mentioned the manual instrumentation parts. So it's all Kubernetes resource types in a generic manner. You can't do that today. Uh, clearly correlating with other signals would be extremely useful, uh, but that's outside the scope of the initial implementation here. Uh, and even the controllers themselves, the custom resource, I'm assuming it's actually not part of the initial scope based on how I'm reading this. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't actually know the full roadmap of this, so uh, I didn't actually come prepared. I, I was asked kind of last minute, but I'm happy to go drill into this and get some more information and pull in relevant people so we can kind of figure out what are the next steps here. Or if people have suggestions or comments, like feel free to add them to the uh, tag observability uh, Google Doc, and I can share them out uh, with uh, the author and uh, other people that are kind of working in this space. Uh, maybe we can have another deep dive on this in a, in a previous uh, tag observability meeting if people are interested. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? Cool. I think that's it for me. So hopefully there'll be other kind of announcements going forward. I know like Envoy added logging support recently. Uh, hopefully we'll see tracing be added here in the future. Um, and hopefully things like uh, Istio and Linkerd will have more native open symmetry support. So we're, we're seeing a pretty good uh, pickup here, but the Kubernetes aspect gives you a new level of visibility. Typically you don't get that level of like platform or infrastructure type correlation. Uh, so this is a pretty exciting change over overall. So thanks folks. All right, next would be white paper. But what I wanted to discuss about the white paper is uh, how to, we are, we are getting some feedback uh, from folks uh, on PR, Slack, Twitter. Uh, was, I wanted to discuss how to better address the, the feedback because people are opening the PR against, against a tag observability repo, but but the white paper is on another PR, so there's going to be some merge conflicts if we. So I think the technically the best way would be to use GitHub uh, discussion, so we can create a new discussion. We we should have it enabled on our tag repo, right? Uh, um, because then we have it in a central place, and you know, because I I saw the you know questions also on Slack, and and it's really hard you know, to um, receive feedback from 15 different channels and including carrier pigeons and whatnot. 
uh, to make sure that nothing drops. So if we do have discussions, I would strongly encourage to use GitHub discussions to just you know have a, a feedback thread or whatever there and then point everyone there. Um, I don't uh, know if it's uh, restrictive, if, if someone needs to have a GitHub account in order to participate, if that's the case, then that might be challenging. Although I believe most people do have, but it would exclude people who, for whatever reasons, don't want to uh, or can't have a GitHub account um, so, to verify that. Uh, I, I don't I don't see discussions on tag observability report. Okay, then uh, we need to check why that is the case. It's likely that um, you just need to enable that on a repo basis. It could be that it is a CNCF thing. Um, we need to... Do you have access? Um, I don't think that I, I can change anything there, but I can give it a try. Let's uh, see if I see this. Part of the service desk, because they need to enable it. So we have this for other people too. It's not enabled by default. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's uh, give the chairs an action item. I always love giving action items to people who are not there. They can't complain. Um, to you know, have a look into into GitHub discussion enablement. Unless anyone has a better suggestion, how we could channel all the feedback. But going with discussion would also make inline commenting a bit hard. Like uh, I was the one who made some review comments on Slack and yes, the okay. problem there was that uh, it was just a list. And for the discussion, we would have the same. So it would be just a list, but we couldn't really uh, address specific sections of the text. Right. That's why I'm asking if, uh, if anyone has a better way to address that. I am super aware of that, you know, you want to have a context. Um, but I guess my main question is, is there a better an alternative for, you know, getting the context and having it in a central place? Because otherwise, you know, it's a little bit, bit challenging to make sure all the especially if you have, um, you know, contradicting um, feedback or whatever, right? Someone says like, oh, you know, this, this section totally should be moved somewhere else. And someone else says, oh no, you know. Um, I don't know, I, I have not found an idle solution yet to that. And it, it, it's hard to settle on a solution without the, the three chairs here. Right. Yeah, that's that's at least. Yeah, you have you have captured it anyways, um, and yeah. Anything uh, else from? Yes, uh, we we also kind of uh, getting the white paper ready, like in the last three weeks. Because we had the chance to, to publish it on the new stack uh, blog post, I think. Uh, I wanted to check with Bartek how is the status on this, because uh, I think the due date is like this week, but at most the next one. But Bartek's not here. Oh, I, my understanding was that we simply mention it and point to, you know, here is the PR, or are, are you talking about a, a more polished, ready to consume version? Or I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what they what they need. So that's what I wanted to check. What did we tell folks? How long we we ask for feedback? Two weeks, or I just we just tell we are open for feedback. We didn't. Uh, oh, perfect. Just right. we didn't put any any uh, oh. date. Hmm. Hello, Patrick. Hello, hello. Uh, 
Have you opened the meeting notes yet? Uh, we had two points regarding the, the white paper. Uh, one is it's, it's really hard to address uh, all feedback because we have different uh, a lot of different channels. Uh, we have I, I've been receiving uh, feedback on Twitter, Slack, uh, GitHub PRs, GitHub comments. Uh, we were wondering we were wondering if it could enable GitHub distinctions on on the repo and just gather everything there. Sure, we can do that. Um, I wonder if it is worth to, yeah, just just really ask uh, people to leave this feedback on, on on the PR, really, so the place we envisioned, and if uh, we can do that for them. So I even asked this person, uh, yeah, can I copy literally their feedback into the PR? I don't know if that's legal or like nice, so I'm just asking first, but. Uh, you know, maybe we can do that. And if you just copy yourself uh, after the approval, then maybe people see the, the, the kind of advantage of having this in the PR. My worry with discussion is like, yeah, I mean, sure, we can do that for the later step, but like right now we envision this 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 piece to be um, a place for the discussion because you see there might be like repeated discussion. And maybe if, the, if, if someone can see the past discussions, there are, higher chances they don't repeat but they maybe join this um, you know kind of the same flow i don't know that would be my thought but i can i can enable discussions anyway uh, let's try that uh, on second thought I, I, actually i think what, what's going to happen is we're going to have uh slack twitter prs and discussions so we're just adding a, a new channel instead of consolidating jesus arthur you are so smart so young and so smart already. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's uh, yeah, an excellent I, point. Yeah. So, no, no, I'm just like, that's an excellent point. Uh, so what can we do to reduce the number of channels? Switch off Slack <laughs> and shut down our DMs. <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean, we, we should at least communicate the preferred method, right? If someone doesn't want to or cannot whatever a comment directly like did, did we communicate so far a preferred way to comment arthur uh i think my text suggestions is what what i've been doing so far uh, all feedback i'm copying the feedback to the pr myself and trying to answer that yeah, uh, yeah, let's let's do it consistently and also just mention that you copy it right to the to the past thread like Twitter and like say hey uh, I will be answering your question there so just join me if you want right um, yeah it's it's hard like people just prefer things uh, but again like we need to have consistent place for you know the duplicate those those discussions and. Um, anyway, I cannot enable discussions. Or maybe that's a good thing. I, I don't think but we could enable. I I would nevertheless, independent of that, uh, agree with with having too many channels regarding the feedback. But I would think that having discussions on our tech repo would actually be a good thing because there might be these kind of like you know FAQ style or whatever things that might come up that uh, you know an issue is not really the right thing and we don't really own code in that sense but discussions really have a nice way to you know raise issues and we can discuss things there so nevertheless I would, would be supportive of enabling discussions for our repo but not using it for the white paper feedback. Okay, I'm uh, adding issue to enable discussions <laughs> because Matt and Rich can do it. Anything else? Uh, yes. Um, and again, uh, about white paper, I wanted to ask what is the status about the the new stack? Uh, what they want from us? Like, what can we do to, to help them? Do you know anything about it? Feedback about what? Sorry. Uh, 
so we we moved forward uh, on the last weeks faster than usual because we wanted to to make oh. the web paper ready for the new stack yeah i think i have you seen that article i never seen this being even released so i will catch up with the status on uh, on the article itself However, what was really encouraged was a blog post for the CNCF around that. So I would, I would uh, you know, treat this new stack thing as, as the best effort and try to come up with like blog posts around that, um, announcing even public comment and like getting more feedback really. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, sounds good to me. I just wanted to know the status. So. Yeah, I don't think it was released, so I will catch up on the uh, new stack as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks for catching on those things and putting this in a state that is actually commentable and, and clean uh, to work on. Cool. Do we have anything else? Uh, I wanted to kind of discuss, like, just you know, ask thing. Uh, I know there is this ongoing discussions about chaos engineering being part of observability or not. Um, yeah, I wonder what's the feeling about this group. Like, looks like there are certain um, facts that, for example, like uh, you know, Litmus, which is like chaos engineering uh, kind of project. Uh, the incubation stage is not actually, you know, evaluated in the observability group, but rather in, I think, app delivery or something like that. So this kind of an indic I don't know who decided that, and I'm fine with this. Uh, it just kind of indicates that, you know, uh, yeah, it might be good to clear clarify this space, right? Which is which is strange because in the landscape, CNCF clearly yeah. positioned all the the chaos tools in in our corner. So um, would really be good to get clarification. Like I, I would be supportive to have them in our space, but, but I, I'm kind of like surprised to, to learn that this is not in, in our charter. Yeah, yeah. And maybe we need to clarify the charter. I don't know, but uh, we definitely would want to have uh, Amy or whoever uh, from CNCF clarifying that. Maybe to provide some background from, from the app delivery perspective, because we had uh, Litmus as a project there. And it extended now even more. So we, uh, the plan is to have a white paper on um, chaos engineering that was driven by the Litmus uh, project team. What then immediately came up that obviously we had the net attack network there because there's obviously also network chaos. And then we had security chaos there, which brought tech security into the mix. And the current activity is to have a dedicated working group on activities around chaos engineering because the way they make it into app delivery is because they do testing and a part of the delivery chain. From I think security one is obviously for security chaos, networking because there's networking chaos and obviously for analyzing it, observability makes sense. So whoever volunteers, I'll bring you into the working group charter discussion um, if, if you're interested in. I think it's spanning a couple of teams. And we had this for other projects as well, where they were assigned to multiple um, tags. And the proposal from the TUC was then at least have a working group that works across uh, tags on those topics. So who wants to get involved, just hit me up on Slack and I'll get you involved in that working group discussion because I think it does make sense to have observability there. Yeah, thanks for the context. This is uh, super helpful. And um, okay, so looks like there is a, a chaos engineering is not left behind. Someone cares about that, so that's good. Um, the and yeah, I'm, I'm writing down a doc that anyone who wants to be participate to that uh, let Alois know on Slack. Uh, the the kind of question here is like this is still part of the landscape observability landscape. So the question is like, do we want to, do you know of any plans? Do we care to change this, to, to bring this topic? What do you think? So how it makes it on the landscape is that somebody submitted it 
onto the landscape <laughs> doc and you can only add like one area where you want it to be and whoever submitted it submitted it for a certain criteria that's how you, these things usually end up but um we also have our meeting tomorrow so i can also reach out to uh the litmus folks and uh point them in your direction to at least present in tech observability and have a discussion over here so they're usually very friendly and and open to to discuss their topics an incubation more or less is done for litmus right now uh oh, from the, the formal criteria but your theory as in this would be something you know a singular case that doesn't really is not really supported by when i look at the landscape because under chaos engineering they're like three six seven things listed not just litmus. so or maybe i'm misunderstanding what you're saying it's how they were submitting it so if you submit it to the landscape and you add it for say observability that's how it then ends up or for uh app delivery that's how it's ended up there and historically this litmus was also added before seek observability even existed right so you're saying that the first chaos engineering related project submitted it to observability and all the others followed through with that or I, I'm, I'm not 100 percent yeah so what i'm what i'm saying is don't interpret too much into how it's in the landscape and let's have the projects working with the tags that make most right. sense of their, their work but so. you see that's what people out there see right i mean cncf is heavily promoting this landscape and if we internally have a different way to deal with things than what we communicate to the outside world then that causes confusion. I'm not, you know, suggesting that we start a fight between tags, a tag of war, so to say. I'm saying let's have it consistent and have it clearly communicated. Where does this belong? I think it would be a good place here, but it's up to the project if they feel this better suited somewhere else. Also great, but let's make it consistent and clear where it belongs, so that if someone comes from the outside and is not as deep as you Alice or myself or whoever uh, they have a clear oh that's the tag that is responsible for that makes sense yeah it's fine let's discuss with Amy so I don't have any objections there so okay um, sorry I didn't hear who we should discuss this with I think it's yeah, I having a discussion with Amy and then eventually Chris. Yeah, I think yeah, Chris will have an on this one as well. Yeah, sorry, it's like a minor, minor need, uh, but sometimes you know people care more about this uh, landscape kind of categorization, some people less. And actually, we have discussion about white paper. It's like, oh, it's part of the landscape. We should definitely think about chaos engineering. And it looks like that's not 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 the case, right? So it just uh, brings some small confusion and nothing else. Okay, I, I can I can take this action item and kind of start the thread. If, unless anyone wants to look at that. This confusion uh, regarding calls engineering on the white paper does, didn't happen only like the, when getting feedback, but when writing as well, we were, we spent like several months discussion if calls engineering should be included or not. All right, let's, let's clarify that. Thank you, Alice, for all those contexts. Okay, that's, that's it from my side. Um, any other comments, topics, ad hoc topics? Um, quick reminder in case you haven't seen it. I think the PromCon CFP is still open for another two weeks or so. So if you have anything metrics related or, or more, consider submitting. Good point. Do we have a link? We have, okay. Okay, I added the link as well on, on our document. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was easy, Bronco. Anyway, 
Um, cool. Thank you very much, Dan. Looks like we are good. Sorry for being late. I was driving and there were there was traffic. Yeah, sorry. And see you around. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye now. Bye.